Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, we will take a first look at the new features for Gen Pages in Power Apps. Features include editing the React code, comparing versions, and GPT-5. Now we have full power, either use the agent in the app to make changes to the React code, or you can directly edit the code. So let's check this video out in action. Generative pages are exclusive to model-driven Power Apps, which is based on Dataverse. In make.powerapps.com, I'll head over to tables. This will list all the tables that I have access to in my current environment. I'll search for a table called user. The user table includes user information that's synced from Microsoft Entra into my environment. Let's build a model driven power app using this table. Let's click create an app. I'll give my app a name and click create. This will start creating my model driven power app. The app will be connected to the user table. It will showcase the views and forms associated with the table. My model driven app has been created, connected to the views and the forms for the user table. Now let's build a generative page. I'll go ahead and click add page. We can describe the kind of page we want to create and also include context of the data for the agent so it can go ahead and design this React based page for our model driven app. Some new features here. We can select the GPT model. GPT 5.0 is now available. Faster and more efficient responses. Let's add the table as context for the app agent. My app includes the user table, so I'll select user. My description, build a page using the user table. I'll click generate. The app agent will now start building my React page. This using GPD-5, you can see how much faster it is in creating the screen. The page has been created. This is the preview. I can head over to code to view the entire React code. Now I can make changes to this page by simply describing the changes I need to the app agent and the agent will regenerate the code. The number one ask, can we directly edit the code? And the answer now is yes. Here is the feature to edit the code. Currently, my page grid experience shows all the user information from the user table. Now this includes non-interactive users, external users and more. I would like to edit the code to only show users that are internal to my organization. For that, I'll head back to code and edit. I'll do a control F and search for where the filter was being applied. Here is the filter. I'll update the code as follows. Check to see if the email address, internal email address is the logical name of the column in the user table. I'm checking to see if this contains my domain name. That means these are users within my organization. I'll go ahead and save. So I've made the change by editing the code. And as you can see, now the grid only lists out users who have that internal email address. Now, if I head back to code, we also have a new option called compare. If I click this, this will show me the difference between the current version of the code and the last version. 
right here is the change that I made. I changed the filter condition from this to this. So I can see what changes I had made. Back to preview. I'm showing full name email. I would like to show the job title of my users. Let's go back to code. I have a constant that's selecting the specific fields from the user table. Instead of mobile phone, I would like to change this to title. Notice I cannot edit because I am in read only mode. I should first click on the edit button. Now I can make changes. Title. And for the field mobile phone, I'll change this to title. Header name, job title. Save. Done. Now this will also list out the job titles of those users. The styling of my grid. The alternate row color is this light gray. Let's change this. Back to code, edit. For the data grid, here is the alternate row color that's being applied. I'll simply change the background color as follows. Save. Now, the alternate row color is the lighter orange. Let's change the grid header color. Once again, in the data grid, I'll edit for the column headers. I'll change the background color to dark orange and the color, I'll set it to white. Save. Done. So you can see how easily we can edit the styles. For the top section, here, I'll replace the background. And for this text field, I'll make the update and save. Here, I can search for users. This is using the data grid control. I can sort, I can filter, I can show and hide specific columns that I would like to see in the grid. The color code orange. What if I would like to change this? Back to code, edit, control F. I can search for my color code. There are two instances observed. Open. You can also replace. I'll change the color code. Replace all. Color is changed. Save. Page updated. The active users, the status is showing enabled. Deactive is showing disabled. I would like to show it in red color. Code, edit. Here is the code where that label color is being defined. I'll modify as follows. Save. Done. You can also ask the agent to make the changes. Let's ask the agent to add a filter for the status column. This time, the app agent will make the changes to the React code. The code is being updated. Note, it will respect all the changes that I had made and start rebuilding the code from that point onwards. So as you can see, all my changes are still valid and in there, but now I also have the option to filter based on the status. Show me all the enabled users. Show me all the deactivated users. Or show me all the users. So the agent has made the updates. I can go back to code and compare and see what were those updates that the agent made. These were all the updates that the agent made from my last version. Where the full name is being displayed, I would like to show an avatar that shows the initials of the user. Let's do that directly by editing the code. I'll add an import statement to import from the Material UI. Material UI is a very popular open source React component library. It comes with a big set of pre-built components, grids, dialogues, avatars, and more. Now let's search for full name. This is where the full name field is being rendered for the grid. 
let's add the render cell property. Render cell, I've written logic that will pick the initials of the user and render in that avatar style. Save. I need to define this function. I'll add that here. Save. The full name cell is being rendered with the user initials. This page, I'll call this my user directory. I'll save and publish my model driven power app. The app is published. Let's play it. Here's my model driven app, standard view experience. Here is my generative page. Add an option to export the grid data to Excel. Within a few seconds, my code's generated, and here's my export option. Back to my model driven app. Show me all my active users. Export this. Here's the exported data. Show me the count of the number of users being rendered in the grid. Back to code. Edit. I'll search for the header component. Let's add count. I'll add the option for count. Add count here as well. And where we are showing the users, right next to this, I'll show the count. Save. Nine users. Search for lab. There are two users where the name or email includes lab. So any changes you want to make, you can easily do so by directly editing the code or by asking the app agent to make the updates. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.